Hey everyone, welcome to another tutorial. This is Danny from BeatsByDanny.com. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how I set up my machine within Ableton. So when I first got my machine, it was really difficult to figure out how to make it integrate well into the DAW. Um, but over the last couple of months, I found a workflow that works for me, and I just wanted to share that with everyone um, in case it helps. Um, so we'll start out by going over to the plugins on the left. Um, you'll see I have the native instruments folder and then the machine. And I have the uh, machine MK3 right here um, on my table at all times. Uh, it's how I sequence my, and program my drums. Sometimes I do it within Ableton. Um, most of the time I'll do it within machine. Um, so once you load it up, you'll get the default machine VST interface. So again, you'll have your, your groups and your kits on the side and uh, sequencer and then options. If you double click into here, uh, you can get into your mixer. I can go through a tutorial later on how to use just your machine to, to navigate through things. So we'll start out by uh, clicking the IO button here. So in the mixer panel, you click the mixer on uh, and you select the IO panel. By default, machine loads all these patterns and groups and projects essentially with a predefined routing. Uh, so the initial setting when you're loading up a machine sound is this routing icon is, is lit up. Basically what that means is whenever you load a new kit, it'll reroute all your mixer presets to match whatever that kit default is, um, which can be nice if you're just starting out and you're getting familiar with the machine and you want to get to know it. It's great to just you know import the default settings and, and get the group settings. Eventually, once you develop a workflow, you want to make sure that things work in, in, in the way that you want them to work. Basically, what I do is instead of everything going out to the group, I have everything going out to an external instrument, which is going to be in Ableton. So basically, what I do is just line up every channel with an external channel. So I'll just go ahead and do that really quickly. This part is probably the simplest part. And I'll show how this relates to what I'm about to do next. So basically we're, we're routing the, the audio signal right now. So we're telling it, hey, I want you to go to ex external one, external two, external three. So basically what you have to do, you can forget about this for now. So what you have to do is go into Ableton and create a new MIDI track. So you click create, insert new MIDI track, shift command T, I use the shortcut most of the times. This is pad two. Uh, and you can imagine what I have the machine plugin loaded on it as pad one, and this is uh, partially how my workflow uh, works. So on pad two, you're going to want to move over here to instruments and then external instrument and just load it onto the the pad or the MIDI track. And it's asking you where do you want your MIDI from this channel to go to. Um, and essentially, uh, we want it to go back into the machine plugin. And within the machine plugin, we want it affecting one of these 16 pads. And what I like to do is just go one by one. So machine one is a special case and I'll explain it later. Pad two will be designated to machine two. Pad three will be designated to machine three. Uh, and then this audio from, you just keep going up by one for every channel. So what I like to do is just duplicate, go over here, make that pad three. It's very important to label everything. And then a quick tip to make sure that you're doing this correctly is whatever pad you're on um, should be, uh, when you assign it to the audio, uh, double the pad should be uh, what the second number is. So if you're on pad three, it should be a six. If you're on pad four, it should be an eight, etc. So I'll make sure you guys see that on my screen. Um, so I'll just go through and do each one of these. All 
I'm just going to make these smaller. All right, there we go. That's six. And I'm just doing them one by one to show you guys how it's done so you can pause the video and make sure you have the same settings as I do if you're doing it this way. Uh, but I, you know, I would just go and duplicate all these and then do them all one by one. So it's always double what pad you're on. That's how you know you're you're doing it right. So it's pad ten. Pad eleven. And now we have all the pads lined up. Each pad would be giving MIDI back to that pad uh, into the machine plugin. The audio from would be coming from whatever pad that is. So I'll show you guys exactly what that means. So in our machine, we routed to exterior one, exterior two, exterior three, exterior four. Exterior two translates into on your pad to translates audio from three slash four that's just the way they they line up some native instruments plugins will say you know output three four machine specifically just says exterior two what ends up happening is once you load your kit remember to always make sure this is not highlighted you can see on the side here, and let, actually let me pull up the uh, mixer view. If you look at my mixer levels, as I hit the pad, each one is assigned to a different channel. So now we know that the audio from the machine is coming into Ableton. Now, that's one part of my flow, basically making sure that whatever pattern I put in here um, is going to actually show up in Ableton so if I press play here all right so you can see the first two channels are bringing audio in here so that's good now in order to get this to play nicely when you're doing MIDI clips and shift Apple shift command M um, you know if you wanted to do the clips this way um, you know and program your drums that way there's a way to do it within this, this setup. Every one of these pads on the sound, uh, if you click the, um, the outputs uh, or the settings here, the sound, and then you go to input. Basically what this is saying is, where should I take my MIDI signal from? And remember on these pads, we said we want the MIDI going to pad two. On pad three, we want the MIDI going to machine three. So basically, that's where it comes full circle. So on each one of these pads on input, you're going to want to say, on MIDI, you're going to want to say, I want MIDI coming from channel one. From actually, if you highlight all these, just press shift and click. If you go to MIDI, you want the source to be the host, which is Ableton in this case. And then if you 
unhighlight everything. You go pad by pad and just do the same thing you did. So pad one, channel one. Pad two, channel two. Pad three, channel three, and so on. So I'll just go ahead and do that. And so now when let's say you didn't want to use machine to trigger or to build your your sequence in here what you could do is go back to ableton and as you're creating midi clips so for example this should be a kick drum right as you're creating midi clips let me just make the loop small now we should be able to hear this trigger the kick drum and there it goes and now the way you would have to program this is the way you would program like if you were dragging audio samples onto this so you would just have to create another MIDI clip uh, and in this case this one would be the snare right so and you can see when you load the machine back up it's not affecting anything in this sequence, it's just playing the audio from the sequence. So this is pretty much how I route my machine into Ableton. And the exact flow I use, basically, it's a little little tricky here. So basically, I'll take this and I'll press uh, Apple G, Command G, it creates a group, and I'll just leave this machine group just so I have all the drums in one place. And so basically what I do is actually, when I'm programming drums, I will actually sequence within machine. You know, what I really like about this workflow is this, that I can still use the machine and its native functions um, to control everything. So I can still sequence in, in this VST. So if, if I can load up any kit now, right, and it'll retain the settings because you always have to make sure that this routing button is not highlighted. But basically what I'll do is, uh, let me make sure the metronome is on. I'll keep that running and then I'll record enable the machine. And I like using just, I almost don't ever use the actual screen on the computer. Um, and then Right, that's just a really quick loop just to show it. But basically what I can do here is manipulate it and move it. I don't turn that much off. So if you press command or apple and move stuff around. You get that like bop there. Once I'm comfortable building a pattern, so let's say I can press note repeat. Actually, that sounds horrible. We're not gonna make things sound horrible here. We're gonna make things sound legit. All right, let's. And I want to show this really quickly is like I can change velocity of, of the notes here and like really go in on my my machine software or you know use the variation button here um, and do the variation controls uh, and click apply and you'll see the variation jumped up jumped up around and so then let's say this was my drum pattern and I was comfortable with it what I would do now is machine has these two really important buttons that a lot of people might not know about one of them is export MIDI and one of them is export audio. I use export MIDI in this workflow. So basically I, I just drag, I click and drag 
and you'll see it, sa it says pattern one. So if you create multiple patterns, you you'll have to have to go through those. And then I'll just drag them into Ableton. And what ends up happening is you just have to make sure that you drag them onto the appropriate pads because they're basically splitting up the MIDI for you. That's a little buggy right there, but basically what ended up happening is it exported both these clips in one place. So that's pretty simple fix, right? So we know we have the kick drum there. And so basically what ends up happening is you now have your clips in here and you can still adjust velocities. You can, you know, make it swing or shift and do however, whatever you want it to do. Um, and it's important to just, um, you saw what I did there, I just created a new pattern so that when it, it doesn't feed back into itself and create that phasing effect. Um, so basically that's like the only catch to this workflow is you always have to make sure that there's a separate pattern uh, so that it, it, it's always blank and it's just playing the pattern that's that's coming from Ableton. But that's pretty much my flow and then, you know, I can come in here and add more more notes and it would just play it back through through the machine and use the machine sounds. I don't always just use the, the default native native instruments drum kit. Sometimes I drag my own or you know other producers kits into into the sound banks. Uh, but because I'm not using routing and because I have this set up as, as a template, essentially once you do this, I would recommend if you don't do this already is if you go to uh, uh, live preferences once you're once you're comfortable with this and maybe some VSTs that you always that you, you know you always go to and use, I would go to the preferences, go to file, and just click save um, under save current as default. And that way, when you load this up, you don't have to recreate this. The other thing you can do is once you've created this, um, and say you don't like using presets or templates, um, you can go to your user library and under instruments, I, or I think I might have created that or. It might have already been there. But basically, anything under user library, you can just drag any track and drop it in there. It'll take that track and create shortcut default to it. Uh, so anytime, see machine group. So anytime I drag this into the program, it's going to create the duplicate of this track. And that's a pretty powerful tool. It's something I use very often. You can see how many instruments I, I had in there. Um, and yeah. You, it'll load the same template and the same settings for you. So there it is. That's the quick tip on how I use my machine with Ableton. This flow, you know, I really wish it could work a little bit better. It's the flow I've seen work best for me where I have complete control of, you know, pun intended, but complete control over both the machine and Ableton in whatever fashion I want. Sometimes I'll just program straight in machine. Sometimes I'll bring it into Ableton. Sometimes I'll start in Ableton and forget about machine. Uh, but either way, um, I have the option to do this. And I hope it helps you guys in your journey. And if you have a machine MK3 or, or any type of machine with the, with the plugin software. So if you like this video, make sure to comment, subscribe, like, it'll help me out. Let me know what people uh, want me to do next and, and what, they're, what, what, you're, um, what you're looking for in terms of tutorials. I'm just starting out doing this, so any feedback is welcome, positive, negative, whatever you have to say. But yeah, subscribe to my channel. Check, check my beats out at beatsbydanny.com if you're interested. If you want me to do any type of tutorial or show you anything more in the machine or in Ableton, uh, just leave a comment below and I'll try my best to make a video for it. Alright, thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next one.